Today I want to talk about something kind of serious, but before I do that, I want to say some thank yous. I want to say thank you to Peter Francisi and Jesse Thorpe for the housewarming gifts. I really appreciate that, guys. That was just really nice of you, so thank you. I also want to say thank you to Christopher P for joining us on Patreon. Thank you so much, Chris P. Really appreciate you, man. But today I want to talk about if someone reached out to me, and it may have been one of these people, it may have been someone else. I'm not going to say I'm going to kind of protect them for privacy issues, but they wanted to thank me for helping them get sober. And this happens periodically, but I actually want to thank you guys. Anytime someone reaches out to me and thanks me for helping them get sober, or sometimes people flat out say I'm the reason they got sober, which is mind blowing to me, but that helps me stay sober for a couple reasons. One, it just it helps me it helps me to not feel as alone. I just know that there's this camaraderie and there's just so many people out there that are like me and it just it helps me. It helps me know that I'm I'm not doing this by myself. So that's huge. But at the same time, you know, just the fact that I've been an inspiration to others, that's a lot of pressure. And it's not a bad pressure, it's a really good pressure. It's just after three and a half years, slipping up is not an option for me. And that's the kind of mindset that you should have when you're a sober person. A very toxic, terrible mindset to have is some of these people have this ideology that if you slip up and relapse, it's okay, just kind of pick yourself up and keep going. And no, no, no. That is a terrible mindset to have. Do not think like that. You're not gonna experience success having a train of thought like that. For me, I'm just so set in the direction of my course and relapsing, not on the table. It's not even an option. It's not even something that I, I even wanna think about. It's, it's, not, it's not part of my plan. And when you have this mindset that if you do relapse, it's okay, you're kind of inadvertently making it part of your plan. I have this mindset that I am not a drinker. Not that I'm trying to quit drinking or I'm trying to be sober. I'm not trying, I'm doing it. I hope maybe that might help some of you guys that, that have this idea that if you relapse, it's okay. Because to me, I mean, yeah, it, it's okay. Like definitely keep going if you do, but you know, it's not okay. It's not something you even want to have on the table. It is not an option. And I also want to tell you guys a story. I had a coach in high school, his name was Brom, and Brom was a dick. Brom was the worst, a lot of us hated Brom. He was just not a nice guy, but he had this excellent mantra. He used to say all the time when we met, you know, adversity or really difficult challenges, he would say, find a way. And it was just such a simple thing, but so powerful. And it could be about anything. Could have been about sports, could have been about life, school, it, it doesn't matter. Whatever you can, whatever you can employ this mantra towards, and it's something that you want to do, you know, you can do it. All you have to do is find a way. So it comes back to drinking. If you want to be sober, you will find a way to be sober. Whether it be, you know, changing up the places you go, or cutting some friends or people out of your life, or, you know, just changing habitual habits that kind of trigger that, that, you know, that want for alcohol. You need to find a way. And if you want it bad enough, you will. You'll find a way to cut it out of your life. And if you don't, well, it's really simple. You won't. You have to be kind of all in, all or nothing, basically. And, uh, you know, I kind of contribute a lot of my success and sobriety to that mantra. But at the same time, you know, the two things I mentioned earlier that you guys helping me, but also, you know, just the, the added pressure of, of needing to stay sober because I've inspired others to do so. So thank you guys. I really appreciate that. I also want to, you know, kind of instill the find a way thing in you guys that have kind of given up on your passions and your hopes and your dreams. Like I'm over here making YouTube videos and I don't have a lot of money, but I have money for everything that I need. Food, fuel, we just got a house. Like I found a way to make it happen and I'm still pursuing my passion. I'm not, you know, selling my soul to a corporation because I need the money or because someone told me that my passion was stupid or because someone, you know, you know, push me out of it or just because it was difficult or whatever the reason it may be for you to give up on your passions and your goals, I'm not doing that. I love making YouTube videos and so here I am 
still bringing it three days a week because I love it. It makes me happy. I love the pursuit of just filming something and then going back and editing it and then just throwing it out there. It's just, I can't explain it. It's like a rush to me. I just, I love it. I I don't know how, how to put it. It's like, it's like an undescribable feeling. I just love making YouTube videos. So yeah, I'm not a rich man, but I have money for everything that I need. And stuff that I don't need, well, you know, maybe it'll come later. And if not, that's okay, because for the most part, I'm happy in my soul doing what I'm doing right now. I enjoy it. So I wanted to say that. And uh, actually, you know what? I want to show you guys something. Some of you guys remember this rug, this rug map that I found out in the middle of the Sonoran Desert. And uh, it was in a video that I titled, Not on Life's Map, Not Normal. And well, it was basically a video about the difference between wants and needs and you know consumerism. And, and I thought you might think it was interesting that I brought this rug with me and now it's in here in this really smelly shed as just a constant reminder that I'm in it to pursue my passions and my dreams and I'm not gonna stop, no matter what. Speaking of wants and needs, I really want to show you guys what I used Peter Franzese's housewarming gift money for. I bought a Harbor Freight electric chainsaw. Shoot! This thing's got up to 50% more power. Little keep back 16 inch bar and chain and easy access to something or other, yada yada, and it's a 16 inch, 50, 14 amp, 50, 100 RPM chainsaw. <coughs> yeah, so uh, Peter, thanks for the housewarming gift. Really appreciate the chainsaw, buddy. And you know what I want to do right now? Cut up some eucalyptus trees. A lot of you guys were confused as to why I had these eucalyptus trees cut down, and well, the reason is simple. They didn't provide any shade, they were too tall and slender, and all they did was just dump leaves all over the yard. I didn't buy a house out in the desert to mow the lawn or rake leaves. Not interested in either of those activities. So, those eucalyptus trees, they had to go. And uh, plus, think about this. By the time winter comes around, I will have some perfectly dry, seasoned eucalyptus firewood. So, to me, the value is worth way more in firewood than baking, breaking my back, raking leaves. Chainsaw. Peter, thank you. And I remember what Randy told me with the chain guard. You want to use your wrist. You don't want to go, ha, and then get a palm full of chain. Yeah, that would be a bad day. Randy, thanks for the tip on the chainsaw. That's all I got for you guys in this one. Hope you found some value in this video. Not so much like the chainsaw part, but you know, like the talk at the beginning. But anyway, don't forget to leave a like on this video and subscribe if you haven't already. It's a free way to support the channel and I would really appreciate it. And I'll see you guys on Wednesday. Thank you so much for watching.